It's my pleasure to welcome Jose Ciade, uh, Pepe to those of us who know him well, uh, Jose Ciade of Unam, Cuernavaca, Mexico, who will speak to us about Milner vibrations for real singularities. Okay. Thanks a lot. It really is a pleasure and honor to be in this Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Thanks for coming. So Milner vibration theorem is, uh, and most of you know it pretty well, anyhow I'll go to the foundations. It's a turning point, turning point in singularity theory. So I will review it uh, briefly. And it's also a theorem with uh, very, very significant applications to other areas of uh, geometry and topology. <clears throat> the a way to describe its idea is the following. I mean, you take U, an open neighborhood of the origin in Rn, just to start from the scratch, take a differentiable function, a map germ into Rk. Let me suppose n is greater than k. Suppose you have a function has a, a critical point at the domain, and you want to study the geometry and topology of the fibers, especially and particularly the special fiber, let me call it F minus one of C. <clears throat> if this were a regular value, locally this is just a disk, and uh, we have finished. There's not a lot more to do. The problem can be interesting if we look globally. Local is very simple. But since we are assuming that we have a, a, a critical point, just even the local picture is highly non-trivial. <clears throat> so, in fact, it's so highly non-trivial that we start to most start imposing hypotheses if we want to do something. So this problem was, uh, well, it actually dates back from different viewpoints with more restrictions, but. It goes back to Newton himself, then many others, Klein, Netter, Zariski, and many other great mathematicians. Uh, let me move to the 1960s. By this time, uh, one of the main problems in mathematics, one of the main trends was studying differentiable structures and manifolds, exotic spheres. How do you create them? How do you classify them? How do you study them? It was not so easy. There, people already knew that there were exotic spheres, and that was a big achievement. Now, how do you put your hands on them? And there were several people working on the topic. One of them was Briscorn. Here's a group. Milner. And others. Okay. <clears throat> and let me say something about this. How, suppose you have Holomorphic map. With, in the, now let me assume with an isolated critical point of the domain. Okay, as an example, the polynomials f of set one, set zero, up to set n equal set zero to the a zero plus set n to the a n with a i greater or equal to 2. <clears throat> okay, so these polynomials were at the time being studied also by FAM, but different reasons coming from physics. 
So they are now known as fan briscon polynomials, fan briscon singularities. But uh, you see, here you can easily check that the, the partial derivatives are all vanishing only at the origin. So the origin is the only critical point. And then you can look at the zero set. And this is a n-dimensional complex analytic variety with an isolated singularity at the critical point. Then it's pretty easy to check in this case that uh, v minus the origin. So, so now th this is a, a smooth manifold, a complex manifold of complex dimension n. And it's pretty easy to see that this meets transversally every sphere around the origin. The claim in general is every sufficiently small sphere. In this case, is every sphere around the origin. So since this is a transverse intersection, this is going to be a, real, a smooth manifold of real dimension 2n minus 1, embedded as a submanifold of the sphere, which has real dimension 2n plus 1. And uh, it's a very nice, beautiful way of producing smooth manifolds. Now, how can you? tell something about their topology. How can you study their topology? By definition, they are, you have a singular set, and you're taking the intersection with a sphere. You have this manifold. And now, how can you put your hands on them? How can you say something about your topology? There was a question in the 60s. In particular, how can you tell if it's a homology sphere, a homotopy sphere? OK, so one way to look at the matter of this question is the following. Observe that you can look at the nearby fibers, f minus 1 of t. Since this is holomorphic, isolated uh, critical values are isolated. So for all small t, this every small t different to 0 is a regular value. So these are complex manifolds. And you take, can take families of these complex manifolds that degenerate to the special fiber. And it turns out, this was known in these examples, and this was known in, by Briscoe, Pham, and other people, that uh, you actually get a fiber bundle in many cases. And uh, <clears throat> all these fibers, independently of t, they were, they were diffeomorphic. And they would intersect this sphere transversally also, for t sufficiently small. And this intersection, which was f minus 1 of t intersected with this sphere, was diffeomorphic to m. But the nice thing is that now m is the boundary of a manifold, of a smooth manifold. So that already gives you more information. And not only that, but you can actually see this manifold as part as the fiber of a vibration, a vibration over the circle. So if you have a fiber bundle over the circle and you take away one fiber, the complement fibers over the interval, which is a contractible space. So it means that the boundary Sorry, that this fiber was the fiber of a certain vibration, which is what I will come about on the sphere minus something. So that when you remove one fiber, the complement has the same homotopy type. So you had really all many powerful tools of algebraic topology to study these objects. And that's what they did. And uh, well, there was a very, very strong theorem of Briscoe. There were theorems by all of them and others. And uh, this culminated with a theorem, beautiful theorem by Briscoe, proving that every homotopy sphere that bounds a parallelizable manifold can be obtained in this way 
for some appropriate polynomial of, the, of this type. Dimension? Well, but there are no, no, in, in higher dimensions also. Well, there are no homotopy spheres in lower dimensions. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, I mean, the point is, the theorem is that you get every homotopy sphere that bounds a parallelizable manifold. That is, that's the theorem. Now, in dimension seven, every homotopy sphere bounds a parallelizable manifold. So you get all of them, okay? So in, so, in fact, this already raises a nice question, which was asked uh, to me by Patrick Popescu Pampu. And uh, we are working on that. Can you use singularity theory to produce homotopy spheres which do not bound a parallelizable manifold? You should, uh, but this is not an easy question, because the singularity cannot be a complete intersection to start with. So it has to be, and then if you can produce homotopy spheres, now you have to be able to decide if they bound a parallelizable manifold, which is a hard problem in itself. But that, that's a, that goes in a different direction. <clears throat> so now, let me mention, and I spoke about the vibration theorem and so on. This was known for these singularities and in other cases. And Milner's vibration theorem is the culmination of these partial results obtained by various people. Let me state it like this. So suppose you have F a holomorphic map, just germ. It doesn't need to be defined globally, just in a neighborhood of the origin. Then, well, and uh, let S epsilon be small enough so that V, which is by definition the vanishing set of F, meets transversally. Every sufficiently small sphere as epsilon. Here I want us to be careful. If one assumes zero is an effective critical point, then away from zero, this is a smooth manifold, and it makes perfect sense to say that this intersects the sphere transversally or not, if the intersection of two manifolds. If the critical point is non-isolated, then this is a singular variety. So this makes sense provided we speak about stratifications. We stratify this variety, then each sufficiently small sphere meets transversally each stratum of, a, of F of V. Okay? Now, let this be small enough So it's not enough with respect to epsilon. So this is for every uh, sphere. Now fix one radius. Let me call it to some epsilon. So that every fiber f minus 1 of t meets transversally. The sphere is epsilon zero. Okay? Now, this seems to be very innocent, and but it's not so innocent. In the sense that, how do we know that it is possible to find such, an, such a delta? It's not hard to see that if we assume this is an isolated critical point, this always exists, just by the implicit function theorem. This was known by Milner 
before his book, he had an article, his first article on the topic, and beautiful. However, this was not known to exist when Milner published his book. So with the first time, the first part of the theorem I'm going to state is essentially due to Milner, but not completely. Because uh, it was, this was not known. To complete this, you, you had to use a theorem that came later by Hironaka, saying that every holomorphic function has what is called the Tom AF property. Then using that, then an, an argument of Ledwin Chang, I mean, the proof of Milner would go through easily. But so. For, for those who aren't familiar with it, it may not be clear how what delta has to do with anything you've written after. It's the, the norm of T is less than delta. Thank you very much. We're for <coughs> T is smaller or equal to delta. Uh, greater than zero. Well, what? I was going to say greater than zero, but you've already assumed it's true at zero. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, we take the zero fiber, we fix a sphere, we know that here we have transversality, and what we say is that for all fibers sufficiently new to this one, we have transversality with the sphere. Okay? Okay. Then, minimal vibration, version one. Set n equals f minus one of the disk radius delta minus the origin. Cap ball of radius epsilon. Let me call, let me take a close ball. Let me call this delta epsilon comma delta. Then F from N epsilon delta into this is a locally trivial vibration or a fiber bundle. Second, the map phi, which is the f divided by the norm of f from the sphere, which is boundary of uh, this disk. Well, from the sphere, which bounds this disk minus f minus 1 of t of 0 into s1 is a locally trivial vibration. OK? So these are the two, version, two versions of minus vibration theorem. And the third statement <clears throat> is that, uh, the third statement is that uh, usually we say that the two vibrations are equivalent. That's essentially correct, except for one little thing. The fibers here, you're, we're taking intersection with a closed ball, so the fibers here are compact manifolds. The fibers here are open manifolds. So one has to be careful with that, but then the statement is, can be phrased in several ways. Three, if we restrict the vibration one to the open ball, then the two vibrations are equivalent. We need to look at the inverse image of just one circle inside that punctured disk, right? One's over a punctured disk, one's over an S1, so the bases aren't the same. Uh, you, are right, you are right, you are right. So if we restrict, yeah, if we restrict, yeah, yeah, if we restrict the vibration Sorry. one to an open ball and, Sorry. no, no, thank you, thank you, thank you for being precise, and to the partial of the disk, which is homeomorphic to the circle, to the derivative, to the boundary of the disk, then, no, thank you, thank you. Yes. 
Okay? So this is the classical Milner theorem. And well, then after that, there have been many generalizations to complete intersection germs, to functions defined on singular varieties, not on CN, to many very interesting results, also very many interesting results describing the topology of the mineral fiber, the monodromy of the vibration, many, many interesting things. Let me move now to the, what is the topic I, I was going to talk about, which is what about real singularities? And when I say real, I actually have in mind real analytic singularities. Otherwise, it's very hard to say anything in this context. <clears throat> well, this is a question. This question goes back to Milner. And this question, in the sense, in the sense of vibrations, because you can look at the same question from many, many, many different points of, points of view, and there are many things by many people. But from the, this viewpoint of uh, Milner vibrations, this question goes back to Milner himself in his book. He proved the following theorem. Let F be now a map germ from Rm plus k into Rk analytic. such that at every point t in near every point t in the domain near the origin the derivative has rank k. So it is a submersion at every point in a punctual neighborhood of the origin. Then we have a fiber bundle, a local equivalent vibration bundle, f go from n epsilon delta into a disk of radius delta now has the dimension k minus the origin where n epsilon delta is f minus 1 of this disk For epsilon delta sufficient is small with respect to smallest epsilon. Okay. And moreover, this defines a fiber bundle. Phi, which is epsilon minus the link let me say as before. But phi can be taken in general 
as f of the norm of f only near f minus 1 of 0. Okay? So let, let me explain. So we have the same drawing. Let me say a word about how the PD theorem is proved in the complex case. So in the complex case, we know that uh, all fibers sufficiently really close to the zero fiber are transversal to the sphere. That's what I said before. <clears throat> okay. Then if you take so this is what I call n epsilon delta. And this projects over a small disk minus the origin. And we know that if you take every point here, and you take the corresponding fiber, this goes here. And these are submersion everywhere in this tube away from the zero set. Okay, And we have transversality here. So now take one point. And uh, a basis of the tangent bundle at this point. A basis of uh, vector fields, smooth vector fields at this point. Since the derivative if, uh, is a submersion, you can lift these vector fields to vector fields around this fiber. They give you a trivialization of the normal bundle of the fiber. And because you have transversality with the boundary, you can arrange things so that when you come to the boundary, these vector fields are tangent to the boundary sphere. And now you have as many vector fields here as the dimension of this, which is the dimension of the normal space of the fiber. So these vector fields allow you to move your fiber nearby and give you that every fiber here has a, a neighborhood where this is a product, just the disk times the fiber. So you have a local product structure. This is a relative version of Erichman vibration theorem. And so you get that you have the first vibration on the tube. And so the tube minus this, fibers over the disk minus the origin. And then you show that you can construct a vector field exists vector field on the ball minus V, which is integral, integral vector field, actually smooth in this case, such that one I is transversal to all spheres. So if you are at, at each point and you travel by an integral line, that integral line is transversal to all these spheres. It is transversal to all tubes, f minus 1 of a small mm -hmm. circle of radius delta, radius eta. So if you take any circle here, and you take the inverse image, you get a family of uh, tubes around here. You take all tubes, and this vector field is transversal to all these tubes. And three, along each integral line, the value f over the norm of f is constant. So if you take one of these integral lines and you take this value, it, has some, it takes some value. And if you move, this doesn't change along the, each integral line. So these three things allow you to, 
these two things, one and two, allow you to give a map from the boundary of the tube to the sphere. How do you do it? You stand in a point, you take the inter integral line through that point, and you travel along it until you come to the boundary sphere. Now, this line does not cross any other tube because it is transversal to, so sorry, it doesn't cross this tube again because it is transversal to the tubes. So this map from the tube to the sphere is injective. And, uh, <clears throat> and it's also subjective because if you stand in any point here, you can travel back and this is, you take the corresponding integral line and you hit the tube. So you get a diffeomorphism between this boundary tube and the complement of the sphere away from a neighborhood. And that's what allows you... So, so, so now, now I want to define a map from the sphere minus the link into the circle, I mean in this case. How do you do it? You stand in a point. Then you take the corresponding integral line until you hit the tube. And here you project with F. And you know that restricted to the tube, this is a fiber bundle. So you get a map from the sphere minus the interior of this neighborhood to the circle. And it's a fiber bundle. But you know more, because this value never changes. You know that the map from the sphere into this circle is essentially this one. And that's how you arrive to, this, to the equivalence of the two vibrations. And that's how you prove that this vibration, in the complex case, this is a fiber bundle with, with projection map F over the norm of F. Okay, this was the discussion in the complex case. This was in the complex case. Okay. Sorry, yes. sorry. This is what you can't do in the real case. Exactly. That, I'll come to that exactly. Yeah, okay. Now, in the real case, you have the vibration in the tube. Exactly the same. Same proof. <clears throat> and you can construct a vector field which satisfies I and 2I. Always you can do it. But 3, sometimes yes, sometimes no. So that's why in the complex, in the real case, you get a vibration on the tube. And you can inflate the tube to the sphere. So you have a vibration in, from the sphere minus the zero set to here. But away from the tube, you don't know what it is. Here, you know, this, this is already fibering. Inside the tube, this is already fibered by this. So inside the tube, you know that this is given by F. Inside the tube. But outside the tube, you don't know. It depends on how you inflate. And when you are here, and you go back and you project, OK, it's very good. From here to here, it's F. But how do you go from here to here? There's a vector field which allows you to do it. But which vector field? You have no control. So that's why in this real case, this theorem, this doesn't say that this is a projection f over the norm of f everywhere, just in a tubular neighborhood of the link. What hypothesis do you need that three holes in the real case? Sorry? What hypothesis do you need that three holes in the I'll come, real case? I'll come, I'll come to that. Okay. Yeah. So in the three real case, we have this theorem of Milner. There are three points I'd like to comment. So three points to comment. Many, many more, but the three points I will comment on. One is it is very stringent. In the holomorphic case, we take a holomorphic map from Cn into C, and that's it. You have the theorem. Here, you are imposing to have an isolated critical point that is very restrictive. We could weaken the hypothesis to say to have an absolute uh, isolated critical value. That's already more general, but still very restrictive. I will discuss more on this. OK, so this is a point. I will comment more on this. Now, two, this, 
projection phi is not globally f over the norm of f. And, the, and we have no control on who is the projection in general. And three, what are the topology Topology of the link, topology of the vibration, applications to topology, topology in general. So there are many things here to discuss about. So about one. First thing was find or decide if there exist examples, which already that was non-trivial, okay? So in fact, there was a theorem in the early 70s by Luyenga, and then using his techniques, it was completed by Church and Lamolke, prove that for k equals two, and for all n, there exist examples of functions, real analytic functions, map germs, with an isolated critical value. And that don't come from complex analytics. That do not, that are non-trivial. Right. Yes, in particular, they do not come from complex analytics. And uh, in fact, they proved, they gave a classification of all pairs n, k, for which non-trivial examples exist. Okay, so now we have this list. But it is not really, there were not really lists of singularities, there were not explicit families. There was a very nice topological construction that would allow you to show that this exists. Then there, was an, uh, there were other examples by Acampo, then later Perron, some examples by Jacques Nahr. For example, Perron proved that the figure eight knot can appear in this way for real polynomials, which is very nice. Then by Jacques Mar, and then I got into the, so, so in the 19th, I started working on this. I came with a family of examples. I consider, coming from a different area, I proved that you, could, you consider polynomials of the form of set one, set zero to the A zero, set sigma one, so it's sigma zero. I explain this now. M bar, where sigma is a permutation of the variables, any permutation. All of these gave examples of, uh, well, they all were real analytic singularities with isolated critical point. And in fact, for, for all of them, the projection map was the obvious one. The projection map was the nice one, f or the, the norm of f. Can sigma be the identity? Yes. If, uh, if sigma is the identity, then they, the, it's not obvious, but it's not hard to show that this turned out to be topologically an equivalent to the Briscoe fan polynomial sets 0 to a 0 minus 1. Topologically, not analytically. And, and then this was improved later by Oka. He proved that the equivalence is uh, diffeomor by diffeomorphism, but not analytic. But only in these cases. In other cases, this single. So in these cases, essentially, there's nothing new up to diffeomorphism. But if this is not the identity, then you get new things. I'll come to that. <clears throat> okay. So this was one thing, very stringent. So one line of approach is to find more examples, more constructions. For example, these all are singularities. One can check that they are very close to being weighted homogeneous complex polynomials. They are not complex, but they have an action of S1 cross R, similar to complex polynomials, to complex homogeneous. So this is a special type of a class of polynomials that later were called polar weighted. by Cisneros, a colleague of mine in Mexico, 
and then Oka. They've been studying this, and then Oka has given more constructions, and so on. So this is one line, to produce families of hopefully interesting singularities, which give you a vibration. Another line is to extend this theory, to make it more general, try to see. Try to make it more general. And this is something I did with Anne Pichon and myself. We extended the theorem for isolated critical value. So we extended, which has, uh, actually was just an observation. So the theorem for, theorem for isolated critical value asking for f with a technical with an important condition which is uh, which I will not define which is tom af property this is just uh, just like in the complex case let them try and notice that this was the condition that one needs to have differentiation in the tube in the real case this is the condition one needs to grant that the fibers close to the zero fiber are transversal to the spheres, and then everything goes through essentially the same way. So we noticed that in this context, you can have it. And this was nice because this can allow you to construct more examples. For example, for instance, take FG holomorphic from CN into C, and take FG bar. Then for n greater than 2, this will never have isolated critical point. But in many cases, they do have isolated critical value. Is it easy to show that you satisfy various of that property? No, that's, that's, that no, that's the little note which was submitted to Journal of Singularities. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So we proved, time ago, we proved that for n equals 2, they satisfy the property. And we proved that in that case, the projection map is globally defined like this. For n bigger than 2, now we prove that uh, they satisfy the Tom AF property. We do not know if globally this can be taken to be the projection map. But we do not know. OK, so example, take polynomials Z1. Set n bar times uh, a fan briscoe polynomial set 1 to the a1 plus set n to the a n. With such that the sum of 1 over a i is not 1. Then these all have isolated critical value. Now, let me come to the second point, uh, the question theory asked me. When can, you take, when can you take the projection map to be f over the norm of f globally? I will just say it briefly. Notice something. Now consider, consider f over the norm of f. <coughs> this goes from Take it restricted to some small sphere minus the zero set. So this makes sense. Into SK minus 1. See? And we want to know whether if this is going to be a fiber bundle in particular, there cannot be critical points. So the first question is, what are the critical points? For this, uh, <coughs> let 
because for each point y in sk minus 1, let ly be the line through 0 and y. Okay? So you have you have a R M plus K. Here you have R K. You take a line. This is the line L Y. Okay? And let me define M Y to be the set of points X in the domain. such that f of x is an element of this y line. Okay? So it's pretty easy to see that lemma. The union, the union of, L, of all of these manifolds is everything, obviously. Because every point here, oops, uh, well, yeah. this is all this here. So this is for all points. Let me restrict this to this sphere if you want. Okay, let me restrict to one sphere. It's the same. So the union is all of it. The intersection of all of this is f minus 1 of 0 intersected with this sphere. And the singular set of ny is contained in the singular set of v. This, is, this isn't, these two statements are very easy. This is not so easy, but this is an exercise. It's very easy. It's pretty easy to, to show. Which means that if we take a function with isolated critical value, then all of these are smooth away from V. Then one can show one can show lemma. It's pretty easy. Uh, X in the sphere minus V is a critical point of phi if and only if the corresponding m y is tangent to the sphere at x. Okay, that's that's essentially the same. That's implicit. That's hidden in Milner's work. Okay. So, definition. This is something that I is a concept we introduced with okay. Cisneros. Sorry? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Yes. 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 Yes, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yes, it is. It's a problem when you change things. Here. Okay, sorry, yes, you're right. It's a problem when you decide to change things right on the spot. Yes. <laughs> but now, now it's correct, thank you. Okay, so the definition of the concept we introduced, F 
is the regular if each manifold m y minus v is transversal to each sufficiently small sphere is epsilon. Okay. So by the above discussion, this is if and only if phi has no critical points on any sufficiently small sphere. Sorry? What does the D stand for? D regular. Why D? Because we have to put a name. No, no. You need a name. Now, what, what name? So D D is very first oh, because. No, it's just quickly two two reasons. Yeah. One, it is related to the function distance to zero, because you use this, you can use any function distance to zero. And second, because there's another concept which is C, right. C regularity and a and, b. and a and b. No, and C regularity okay. implies D regularity. Okay. Right. So, yeah, those are the reasons. No? Okay. okay. So you have this concept, and then. The nice thing is their theorem there exists a vector field with properties which I erased I, two I and three I as in the complex case. If and only if F is D regular. So this is the first statement. I, A, and B. Hence, given F from R n plus k into R k with isolated critical value and tone property we have that F is the regular if and only if phi from S epsilon minus V into SK minus 1 is a fiber bundle. for all epsilon and in this case the two vibrations which is only one on the tube another on the sphere are equivalent. Okay. Can you rephrase the regular in terms of not the sets and why, but in terms of some of the critical points of some auxiliary map or the distance function or something? Yeah, yes, yes. We can
can do things, but I'm sure we can do more things, maybe discussing with you. Okay. Yeah. So I have, uh, when my time has run over, so just, no, just let, let me move yeah, quickly. Five more minutes, maybe. Okay. We started late. We started. Okay. Okay, so let me move quickly to the last point, which is the topology. So in this case, let me mention a few situations. First is what I've been doing with anti Schon and also Arnobodan. This uh, first uh, observation, take F G holomorphic from C N into C such that well okay and now take consider the map F times G bar as before divided by its norm which goes from the smallest sphere minus the new node V F G so it's the vanishing set of F and G into S1 Okay, and now observe that away from G equals to zero, one has, this is very easy, but very mysterious, I mean, it's very surprising. It's the same as taking F over G divided by the norm of f over g. Okay? So, fg bar is very different to the meromorphic germ f over g. Very different. But when you divide by the norm, you can see that it's an easy exercise that anyone can do, that you have this. So, if you are asking about a vibration theorem for this type, for germs fg bar, is the same as a vibration theorem for meromorphic germs. And here you have a lot of complex geometry involved. And uh, local vibration theorems in kind of a, in a tube were studied before. So vibration theorems for meromorphic germs were studied before by Sabir, Gusein, Sade, Luengo, and Alexander Meggi, and then later by Siersma and Tibar. So they were looking at morphic germs and just looking at the little tube around and vibration of the little tube. Now, instead, so in that case, you have the vanishing set of Fg, and you have little tubes that, in that case, contain zero in the origin, because you're looking at metamorphic germs. And now you, you look at what happens in a sphere. And, uh, well, you have all this situation. And in a paper with Pichon and Arnaud Boudin, we, we managed to discuss how this vibration on the sphere relates to the local vibrations on tubes studied by these guys. And this is a nice subject in the sense that there's a lot of complex geometry that allows you to do, to say things. Yeah. Another line is um, all the recent work by Mutsuo Oka. Oka. He's studying germs from C N into C defined in variables C1, C1 conjugate, C2, 
C2 conjugate, etc. Like those I, like those I mentioned before, but in general, he's considering these gems. He's calling these mixed functions. And he has managed to really beautifully apply all the, I mean, many of the machinery he knew from complex singularities to studying these objects. So he can apply machinery from complex singularities. In particular, much of his work, the results he has in his book about toric geometry about resolutions of singularities and relations with linear vibrations and so on. He, he has managed to do that. But he, he just set up the theory. So there's a lot to understand and to really come to concrete examples. And finally, just one more thing I want to mention is the following. Now that we have this concept of deregularity, you can start playing in the style of, uh, so examples of irregular functions, all holomorphic germs, and many others. Now, now if for complex variables, you know that if you have a function in, in some variables and another function in different variables, you can add them. You have a holomorphic function, and Tom Sebastiani tells you how to relate the mineral fiber of the sum to the mineral fibers of each pieces. We can do something similar for irregular functions. And in particular, our student, Aide Aguilar, she just finished her thesis with, uh, with Anne Pichon and myself. She considered the following singularities. See, let me say x, y, x to the p plus y to the q bar. These are complex variables. These were studied by Anne Pichon and myself long ago. These are very simple in C2. But well, then she added a holomorphic term. So this go from C3 into C. And then you see it's very easy to show that they have isolated the critical point. It's not so easy to show, but it is true that the projection map, if this is F, the projection map is F over the norm of F. And then she managed to describe the topology of the link. The link turns out to be a cipher manifold. He defined, he, he evaluated, he constructed all the cipher team variants. He constructed everything. And he, she came to a very nice conclusion. If the triples P, Q, R. So in all cases, you get vibration f over the norm of f from every small sphere minus the zero set into S1. And this defines what, define what is called, is known as an open book. An open book decomposition on this sphere. And uh, something very nice that she proved that in, in all cases, The link f minus one of zero intersected with the sphere is the link of a complex singularity. So here you say, well, then perhaps there's nothing new. Perhaps these are just open books defined by, by holomorphic germs again. And there's no, I mean, if you take a holomorphic germ and you make a differentiable change of coordinates somewhere, now it's no longer holomorphic, but you're just fooling yourself. So this could, could be happening, something like that. But no. Shift proved that. Uh, In the cases, when the triples P, Q, R, R, let me take this because I forget the numbers. If this is 
two, three, R. So R greater or equal to two in these polynomials. Then she shows that the corresponding complex singularity cannot be defined in C3. Okay? So we have here a real analytic singularity whose link, which is this manifold, is the link of a complex surface singularity, but in abstract, embedded in some CN. But that complex singularity cannot be realized in C3. And then there was another, somehow even more sophisticated example, which is when you take the triple two Q two for Q greater or equal to three. In this case, the link can possibly be the link of a surface singularity in C3. So this obstruction does not exist here. The link could be the link of a surface singularity. But the corresponding Milner fiber cannot be the fiber of any holomorphic smoothing of a Gorenstein singularity. I will not say what Gorenstein means, but this condition that every surface singularity, every hypersurface singularity is Gorenstein. So this, she proves that this cannot be appear as the fiber of any smoothing of a Gorenstein singularity. So in particular, these open books are new in the sense that cannot be, they cannot be, be realized by a holomorphic germ in C3. And I stop here. It is orientation preserving homeomorphic. Oh, it's homeomorphic. Homeomorphic. It's orientation preserving homeomorphic to the link of a complex surface okay. singularity. So, or in other words, yeah, it's a Walhausen. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Can you have a non pi homeomorphic uh, fiber? No, no, not in this way. Because in this way, the Milner fiber appears as the inverse image of a regular value. So it is automatically stably parallelizable, and every manifold with non-empty boundary, if it is stably parallelizable, it is parallelizable. So in this way, no. Other questions before I ask my three? Hmm? Marcus, is that your hand? No. No, okay. Um, so deregular, you translated the, the condition about f over the norm of f, and critical points on S epsilon into a topological condition, but that doesn't seem more effective to me than just saying there's no critical points of phi on S epsilon because 
how are you going to tell that these, I mean, suppose you've got an example and you want to tell that it's deregular, you won't use the topological condition, you'll use no. the, the phi, you'll find that phi has no critical points restricted to S epsilon, right? Yes. All right. Yes, uh, <coughs> let me ask you. On the one hand, these same kind of objects have been studied also by Tibar and Raimundo, and they found a very ni nice matrix that allows you to decide whether or not you have critical points. Right. That's one way to decide, which in any case is not any better than just saying that you do not have critical points of uh, fire. Right. It's the same. <laughs> right. The advantage of this is that this allows you to construct explicitly a vector field right. that gives you right. the equivalence between the two vibrations. But for given it, right, so it helps you with proofs to yes. measure those. Yes, same, yes, right, To actually check in an example. So for, for that it is better the... And how do you check A sub F? Ah, uh, that's, Just, a, that, that's it's very a, hard. Varies yeah. from example I mean, to example. We need, we need, right. perhaps we need, we need to use no. Massey's Loyasevich's condition. <laughs> or well, I don't that's know. hard to check too. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, my last yes. question about the Sebastiani Tom over the reels. I hadn't ever thought about that. Um, the trick, the difficulty must be the same as in the complexes, proving that you have nice neighborhoods that are kind of, well, poly disks. That's the yeah. that's the real obstruction. That's the real difficulty in the yes, in that the complex um, yes. case. Yes, here there are some other difficulties yeah, which imagine. arise from the topology, but we have one very big advantage, which is a work already done by other authors. Right. There's an art interesting article by Kaufman and Walter Neumann. But the technical details of getting nice neighborhoods must be awful, I would think. No. Not so much. Not so ah, much. well then I need to look at the papers because it should be. No, well, <laughs> well then first, first we have to finish writing the papers. Ah. The, this part is finished. This for what we're seeing right. the, in that case is complete right. and it's uh, going to appear already in Geometria Dedicat. In uh -huh. general, we are doing it. I think if everything works. But, uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's, should have thought of that before. All right, any other questions, comments? All right, let's thank Pepe again. Thanks. Thank you.